Hey all, Tony Bing here, hello and welcome back to another guide video for Marvel Strike Force. Now today we will be doing an updated version of a video I done quite some time ago. It's all about the characters that are available within the different stores in the game and the priority in which you should actually be farming those characters. So there are three stores, of course. It's the Arena, the Raid and the Blitz store. And in this video to prioritise the characters, I'll be looking at really how they can be used in events in the game. So it could be a legendary event, or it could be an event where you can farm gold such as payday or ability materials such as a block party event. I'll also be looking overall how useful the character is, do they have strong synergies with other characters and can they help out in different campaign modes that are available as well. So we'll prioritise them based on that order. Now the idea for actually updating this video came from an exceptionally detailed breakdown I got from a player called Rasta the Master. He really has done the majority of the groundwork here for me today. So firstly thanks to Rasta the Master for helping me out with this and prompting me to actually update this guide. And here we go, let's have a look at the stores. So the first one we'll check out will be the Arena store. When we show off the characters for each of the stores here, firstly I'll list them in alphabetical order and then what I'll actually do is I'll change that list and swap it round to the priority that I would farm the characters, the most useful characters being at the top and the characters I would farm last at the bottom. But for the arena store you have 9 characters in total. So we have Aim Researcher, Daredevil, you have Deadpool that was just recently added and that's fantastic. We've got Drax, Hand Archer, Quake, Mordo, Scarlet Witch and Shield Security, so some really nice characters there. So let's see the order I would recommend farming them in. So here is the order I would recommend you farm them in, and as mentioned it's the highest priority at the top, lowest priority at the bottom. So we have Daredevil first. Now the reason I would have him up at the top here is that he's part of the Defenders team that are absolutely fantastic in the game at the moment. They can dominate raids, they can dominate arena, but the Defenders will actually be used in the block party event which will eventually get you the exceptionally important tier 4 ability materials and Daredevil is just a fantastic character as well. But you then have Deadpool coming in next. Now the main reason for Deadpool is the payday event. When you actually have 5 mercenaries at 7 star, every time the payday event comes round you can get a whopping 2.4 million gold and just about everything in the game really resolves around gold, be it ranking up your characters or leveling them up. So this is very important and Deadpool is an awesome character as well. The next character we have is Shield Security who forms possibly the strongest meta team in the game at the moment as of course a Shield team led by Nick Fury. So Shield Security is great because he fits into that team but you've also got the fact that being a Shield character he can be used to farm Iron Man Legendary event as well so that's really nice and overall he's just an absolutely fantastic tank character. The next one we have is Drax. Now Drax is a character that's dropped off a little bit due to how good Luke Cage is now and he can take you through the hero campaign. But the reason he's so high up here is that he can be used to farm Star-Lord and Star-Lord is an incredible legendary character. He's one of the best characters in the game and if you pair him up with Rocket, absolutely amazing. Now the next character we have, you don't really have that many synergies here, is Quake. Now she could drop into the Iron Man event because she's a shield character but you'll be levelling up your shield team anyway and you can use them for that so she's not entirely necessary but overall she's a really good character. Her AOE wide slow for two turns and also the ultimate she has with the offence down are really pretty amazing so that's the reason she's middle of the list here. Next character we have is Hand Archer, they're important due to the Relic event. The Relic event is where you get your advanced catalyst that you need to actually take your characters, I think it's from gear tier 8 onwards you actually need them so they are exceptionally hard to actually build up a stock of because you're always using them so that's the Hand Archer. The next priority I would say is Mordo now, he is quite far down the list but he is still important because he can help out in the Mystic campaign which is really tough and it's got some amazing characters including Vision locked behind it and Mordo and the next character Scarlet Witch are almost required in order to actually unlock Vision. It's Mystic Node 3.9 they can help you beat. You've also got the fact with Scarlet Witch, she has a campaign with Miss Marvel that's not clear if it comes back, but if it does come back that can certainly be useful there. And then finally you've got the aim researcher down the bottom. There's no synergies, there's nothing they really do at the moment, 
in the future you may potentially need a five star aim researcher to get Modoc, and that's the only reason I would say farm them and I would only really farm them up to five star and keep them at that so you can build up some currency for any new characters that do come to the arena mode so that's the the characters in the arena anyway and as mentioned the strong emphasis is on characters that can help you complete events in the game and get more gold and get legendary characters so next up we'll check out the blitz mode we have 11 characters in total then that are available via the Blitz store and this one was actually really quite difficult to prioritise. We have some awful characters but we've got some pretty amazing ones as well. Now the characters we'll look at is A Monstrosity, Ant-Man, Crossbones, Gamora, Hydra Rifle Trooper, Hydra Scientist, Creed Royal Guard, Luke Cage, Mercenary Riot Guard, Ravenger Boomer and then finally Spider-Man. So let's see the order I would place them in. We start off here with another Defenders character at the top. The reasons are really the same as they were for Daredevil. You've got the fact that Defenders are amazing in raids, they're amazing in Arena, and you've got that all-important block party event with your Tier 4 materials. The next character we have is the Mercenary Riot Guard. The reason we have a minion in second place is that he can help you actually get to the maximum tier in the payday event. And once again, you can get 2.4 million every time it comes around if you've got a max 7 star team. The next three characters we have here were exceptionally difficult to place. So if you actually slightly disagree with the placement of them, I would probably agree with you because this was so difficult to actually put them. They were all very close to each other. Now I've got Gamora at the top. The reason being that she fits into the Guardians of the Galaxy team, which is getting a buff pretty soon. And she's also required to actually unlock Star-Lord. And then finally, you've got the fact that she's a fantastic character even with the Guardians of the Galaxy team. Next up you have the Creed Royal Guard. The reason they're as high up as that is they would be actually required to unlock Nick Fury. You, you need five Kree characters to do that and also the Kree will be getting a buff pretty soon. I think it's March we're thinking of due to the, the Captain Marvel movie. Next character is Spider-Man. He works exceptionally well on the Spider-Verse team. He can be used in the block party event but you can actually use Defender instead and that's the reason he's a little bit lower down out of the three here but overall he is still an absolutely awesome hero the next one we have is crossbones he doesn't really tie in with any events or any modes but he's got one of the best ultimates in the game so that's why he's middle of the list here for the next four characters on the list here we have a break in it and the reason for that is once you actually get to this point in blitz you may actually want to consider buying the uh, orbs that cost 350 of the blitz currency whereas a minion will cost you 400 a named hero will cost you 500 because the characters you want at that point you already have if you get duplicates they can go towards ultimate shards which is really nice and also with these orbs you can get anywhere from between three to six thousand gold in them now the four remaining characters anyway you have ant-man that's a much better character than i feel a lot of people actually believe he is his two tons of ability block is pretty awesome and he's slow as well hydra rifle trooper can be useful for the blaster challenge and potentially again you may get red skull locked behind hydra characters a monstrosity may lead into modok eventually finally the ravager boomer you really don't want to invest in him at all because there's now no need for them because we can farm group which means we can get our five characters in order to farm star lord so there's genuinely no need to go for him at all there so with that covered let's have a look at the final store this is a raid store we have 10 characters in total here for the raid store now the way the store actually rotates with only three characters available every cycle it can be a bit of a slow farm unfortunately but we've got some really nice heroes there now they are Eamon Vector, Han Sentry, Hydra Grenadier, Kree Oracle, Mercenary Soldier, Ravager Stitcher, Rocket Raccoon and oh my Rocket Raccoon is awesome Ronin, Shield Trooper and then finally 4. So let's now have a look and see the order of priority for farming these. At the top of this list then we have one of my favourite characters in the game is the awesome Rocket Raccoon. Now he's great because he's required for the Star Lord event and the combination of Rocket and Star Lord together is absolutely insane. You can almost get the ultimate every turn if you throw in Thanos as well there. He's just an incredible DPS character. He puts out wide AoE damage and you also have the fact that he can help out in that blaster challenge where you get your catalysts. So that is exceptionally important. 
The next character we have is Shield Trooper. Now they can be used like the Shield Security we talked about already. So they're used for the Iron Man event to unlock him. They fit into the Shield meta team with Nick Fury. And you've also got the fact he's a blaster. So again, he can help out the same way that Rocket Raccoon would in farming your advanced catalysts. The next character we have here is a Kree Oracle. Now the reason I put the shield before Kree is that if you farm up a full Kree team and unlock Nick Fury, that would be great but you need to have a shield team to go alongside them. So that's the reason I would say farm the shield characters up first, and they're actually really good without Nick Fury as well. But it's Kree Oracle, and like the other Kree characters we've already mentioned, he has a requirement in order to unlock Fury and get that meta shield team, so he really is important. The next character we have is one of my favourite protector characters in the game, it's the awesome Han Sentry. He can be used in the Relic event to get your advanced catalyst. And there's also the fact he's exceptionally good when it comes to the villain and mystique campaign. The survivability he offers really is through the roof. Final character we have here before there's a slight break in them and I'll explain why in a moment. It's Ronan. I would say it is still worthwhile farming them because the Kree and Ronan will be getting a rework soon. And if the reworks are like any other reworks we've seen, they'll probably be really quite powerful. Now, the reason we have a break with these remaining characters is that the raid store is different from all the other stores in the game and that you can also farm gear as well. So with other stores, you may as well just farm all the characters because you can eventually use them in blitz or get ultimate shards. The raid store is different. You want to be using a lot of your currency on gear as well. So at this point, with the five I have listed, I would say that you potentially want to start farming gear and maybe forget about these for now. But the characters we have are four. Now he's at the higher end of this list here, because I'm thinking he's a flagship character. Surely he'll get buffed at some point and become a lot better. And if as Guardian characters come to the game, that would help him out due to his passive and the additional damage he gets. Next up, we have Hydra Grenadier. And like the other Hydra characters in time, they may be used to unlock Red Skull. Same goes for the Aim Infector, who could be used to unlock Modok potentially. And then the final two characters, I would say that unlock them and use them in your Blitz team. Other than that, don't go any further. It would be Ravager Stitcher and Mercenary Soldier. They're not needed for any events. They don't really fit into any teams or anything like that. And they're pretty weak characters as well. So I would avoid these. So that's every character covered from the, the Arena Raid and Blitz store. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree what characters you're farming at the moment and how you're getting on with the teams that you're farming up as well. And as always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all again soon.